Today, we're going to be talking about pet euthanasia and all of that icky guilt that so many people feel around this experience. Hi, my name is Danielle McKinnon. I am an animal communicator. That means pet psychic. I speak to animals that are alive as well as crossed over with my intuition. <laughs> So today we're gonna to be talking about euthanasia. This is the thing that I'm asked about probably the most in social media when people discover that my channel is all about animals crossing over. And um, it's also the thing that from what I see, people have the most um, guilt around. So I'm gonna share with you what I know from what the animals have told me about euthanasia. And um, those three things that I'm going to share will hopefully help you understand from the animal's viewpoint about euthanasia. First of all, animals plan their passing. They choose who's going to be there, what they're going to die of, uh, when they're going to die, what is going on around them. They choose all of this at the soul level, not consciously, but at the deeper level, they're connected to the big picture and they choose how they're going to pass. That includes euthanasia. In addition to a car accident, old age, whatever it is, euthanasia is one of the methods they choose. I do have a video about this, um, are animals afraid to die? So you can watch that video if you want more information on it. But how do they choose each method? Well, I don't know. I don't know all the different factors that they put in play because I am not connected like animals are connected. They know more than me. So they're able to look at everything that's going on and figure out this is the way I'm gonna pass, this is how I'm gonna pass, this is, this is the whole deal. So euthanasia, if you think as the human that, hey, I chose this, maybe I should have waited. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. Well, I want you to understand that at a very deep level, the animal is driving you to make the decisions that you're making. In other words, you may think you're deciding, you know what, I think this is time, da, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help him cross over, I'm going to call my vet. And yet, because of the connection that you have with this animal and because the animal knows what's best in a big picture way, that animal is actually maneuvering things so that you make that decision. When I connect with animals that have crossed over, I've never had an animal come to me and say, that was an accident. I wasn't supposed to pass yet. She shouldn't have euthanized me. This is a problem. You know, it doesn't work like that because they plan it. They on the other side are able to cross over and then be present for us. And what does that mean? Well, it means they're not, when you euthanize an animal, you're not um, creating a situation where that animal is going to be angry with you. So many people are afraid to do an animal communication reading because they helped their pet cross over and they're worried that their pet is going to hold a grudge. And it actually doesn't work like that. In fact, the way it works is that when the animal gets on the other side, whether it's through euthanasia or any other method, that animal now has access to even more of the big picture, even more information, and that animal will now do even more to help you grow, evolve, to connect to you, and to be there for you. The thing that animals don't want us to do when they've crossed over, especially through euthanasia, is spend our time feeling badly about how our pet crossed over. Now, this is with euthanasia, but this is also with, you know, the, you left the door open and your dog ran outside and got hit by a car. This is with, I should have taken my cat to the vet earlier. I should have done this. All of that regret. Our animals don't want us to feel that, to go through that experience. What they want for us is to um, be happy, to grow, to evolve, to learn from their passing. So if you're in a place where you're grieving, but you're also feeling guilty and terrible and bad, A, that's going to slow down your grieving. It's going to get in the way of your grieving. That guilt absolutely kind of impedes the grieving process. And there is a whole process to go through with the grieving. So if you're in this guilt place, not only are you impeding the grieving process, but 
You're also making it harder for your pet who's now on the other side to come through and give you a message, to come through, show up in your dreams, to connect with you, to continue helping you. As long as you're in that place of guilt, you don't get to have the relationship with your pet that you could have while your pet is now on the other side. So the best thing from what the animals have told me that you can do to help yourself through this very challenging process is let go of the guilt. What is guilt? It doesn't do anything. It doesn't have a function other than to hold you back. If you want to be there, if you want to connect with your pet, if you want more from this relationship, I know I sound like a crazy person saying you can have more from the relationship with your pet even after they've crossed. But if you desire that, you have to let go of the guilt. Your pet chose euthanasia and got you to choose euthanasia. Your pet crossed over and wants to connect with you, wants to give you messages, and even wants to continue helping you grow and evolve. None of that can happen when you sit in this place of guilt. So remind yourself that you don't really have a choice in all of this. Your pet crossed over in the way that your pet needed to cross over. We just have to be okay with that. And now it's time to be present. Stop living in the past. Be present. Be present and ask your pet for signs. Ask your pet for, message, for messages. Try my dream connect method. Uh, that's another video that I have. But be present with the now and what you and your pet can have versus hanging out in the past and feeling the regret. You still get to have a relationship with your pet.